Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Barry Beckham. Let's talk more photography, image editing through camera raw and Photoshop and photographic technique. With the image opened up into Adobe Camera Raw, let's take a quick look at the settings used just below the histogram at the top right. The image was shot from a tripod. I think that's pretty obvious given that the rocks are sharp, but there's quite a bit of movement in the water. So 100 ISO was used. I don't think we need anything more than that, especially when we're shooting from a tripod. I'm using probably one of my favorite lenses. It's the Canon 16 to 35 millimeter zoom. On this occasion, it was set at 35 millimeter. But you can see that my intention was to include some movement here because I have set the aperture quite small at f22, which has allowed me a one second shutter speed. Now this wasn't the only picture I took at the time, of course, I took quite a number of them because every time we press the shutter button, the C is going to render slightly differently. And I also did just one or two experiments with not only one second shutter speed, which we can see here, but I took some shots at a half a second, which worked almost as well. And I took one or two using two seconds, but I found the two seconds made the water a bit too smooth for my liking. Now, as you can see, I have already placed the rule of thirds grid over the image and you can see that the composition is pretty good. We have that top line nicely on the horizon. If you look very carefully just on the right hand side, but probably more on the left, you can see the actual horizon was a little bit higher, but the important part are those rocks along that top line. Down at the bottom, we've got a nice big rock that's coming across that strong point and it's coming across at a nice angle. And on the left hand side, we've got exactly the same too. So in some respects, we've got a set of lines here, almost taking us right into the picture, to the left, around to the right, and then we're left with the sea bursting over the rock. Now this image was shot at 6.17 p.m. And as is often the case when we shoot images when the sun has gone down or there's very thick cloud, we do introduce a little bit of blue into the picture. It does make the image look a bit cold. So we're going to need to address that color balance. So let's make that our first thing to do. I'm gonna go down to my basic tab I'm going to select the white balance eyedropper tool from the right hand side. On the picture I'm looking for a neutral area, something that's not completely burnt out, and I don't think we've got a problem with that here, but something that should be neutral in colour. Well I think the water breaking over those rocks is about right, I'm going to click. If you look over to the right hand side at the temperature and tint as I do click, there you'll see the difference it's made and when we come back to the picture we can see quite a considerable change for the better. I think once we get down to the point where we add some vibrance and more colour I think we're going to see the benefit of that change. Now if we look up at the histogram we can see that we appear to have a bit of a deficiency on the right hand side. If I move my cursor up there, you can see we've got a gap down here. But if you look just below the histogram, you can see the deficiency is in the highlights and the whites. But I may actually want to bring the exposure down just a little bit. So let's come down to that slider. Let me just bring that down a little bit. But then I'm going to try to affect the area on the right of the histogram by going to the highlight slider and moving that to the right and then to the whites and moving that to the right. I don't want to go so far that the clipping warning lights up on the right hand side, the top corner, see it, that little shape. So we need to come back away from there. 
but that's not looking too bad to start with. Now if we look at the rocks, especially the ones in the foreground, they're a little bit on the heavy side. So I'm going to go to my shadows and step them up quite a bit. And there you can see that makes quite a nice difference. I'm going to go down to the clarity and take quite a large amount of that, at least halfway, to the right that is. And then quite a healthy slug of vibrance. In fact, I'm going to push this because I want to warm up that sand and the rocks. Now, if we take just a couple of minutes time out here, what I'd like to do with this image is to do something with the foreground. I'd like to put a gradient filter on the foreground to try to get that a lot darker, particularly along the bottom edge. I think we need to look at the sky and do something similar there and we'll also take a look at the colour of the sky in case we introduce a little bit too much blue but the blue is working quite nice at the moment with the warm tones of the sand. Blue is a cool colour, the sand is a warm colour so we've got a nice complementary colour thing going on. I think I'll also look at trying to bring down the highlights right in the centre the wave coming over the rock and the one just in front of that but I may also look at trying to enhance color through the image that I showed earlier on with those arrows from the left hand side where the water's spilling out up then it goes left then it goes right I'll see if I can enhance that a little bit too now as you can see by the spinning round of the screen, I just want to make a brief stop here because unknown to you, I started recording this video on one day and now I've come back the next to carry on. It's not uncommon sometimes to be sitting down working on an image that you have to leave the computer for one reason or another. So at any time in Adobe Camera Raw, if you're working through an image like this and you need to leave it, if you click the done button down at the bottom right, you'll notice that Adobe Camera Raw closes down, but all of the work we've done on that image is safe. All we need to do is navigate back to Adobe's bridge, double click the thumbnail, and we can reopen it from exactly where we left it. So here we are in Bridge, there's the image we've been working on, all I need to do is double click. We'll be straight back into Adobe Camera Raw, we can open up the Basic tab, and I think one of the last things we did was to increase the vibrance. Now what I've done here by pausing the manipulation halfway through is not a bad thing. Sometimes when we're in full creative flow, we don't always take the right course. It's like trying to write a complicated letter. When we first write it and read it, it sounds great. Read it the next morning and we find words missing, maybe two words where there should be one. You get the idea. Well, image editing is much the same. So if you do have the patience to just stop, walk away, sometimes all it needs is half an hour, an hour, but if you can come back the next day, like I've done here, sometimes we see the image slightly differently. The first thing that strikes me is I think I'd like to squeeze even a little more colour into this image. So I'm going to have a go at that by having a look at the saturation. So just stepping that up a little bit while looking at the image. That's the sort of thing I'm looking for, just to bring a little bit more colour impact into the shot. Now I'd like to look at a graduated filter for the base and possibly for the sky too. Let's start with the base. So I'm going to pick up the graduated filter from the top right, down to the centre bottom of the image, click and drag upwards, something like that. Maybe I'll come back down a little bit. If you want to get this a little bit more controllable, if you move your cursor away from the center, you'll find the rotation is a bit easier. I'm going to touch the V key, but just before I do that, the V key just hides that selection. I'm going to right click and reset 
the settings within it so touch the V key now I can make my changes unhindered by that bounding box all I really want to do is to drop the exposure down at the base maybe I could look at the clarity see if that helps doesn't do a great deal but that's the sort of thing I'm looking for now I'm going to touch the V key again to bring that bounding box back no real reason to do that but I don't want to confuse anybody as I click at the top and drag down a gradient for the top and the sky. Something like that because I want it to affect mostly this part up here. Once again I'll right click and reset what's within it because these tools always remember the last setting. The V key again will hide it but it's still there, still working. So what I'd like to do here is to maybe take a look at some highlights because we do have a light cloud at the top and exposure. I want to take it down quite a bit, something like that I think. I'm not too keen on the colour of the sky. So I could try the temperature, just moving it down a little bit. Sometimes when I'm doing that I like to put my cursor in that box. And then I can use the down arrow to do that and you can see the change in the sky. Now I think the sky is going quite nice there but maybe a little too blue so maybe we can just drop the saturation down a little bit down at the bottom of the gradient tool just to lessen the effect. So we've got a nice bit of darkening in the sky, we've got the foreground held in reasonably well. The right hand side is pretty strong, the left hand side tiny little bit weaker I'm going to suggest. So what I could do is touch that V key once again because I could even click and drag to bring a gradient in from the left hand side. Same as before though, I don't want the settings I've just chosen. So right click, reset, touch the V key because all I want to do here is to just drop the exposure just a little bit just to make the left side balance nicely with the right. Now I'd like to do just a little bit of work with my adjustment brush. I'm going to pick up the brush from the top right. I'm going to just brush onto the picture, right click over the pin and reset any settings that were already there. I'm going to just drop down the highlights a little bit, maybe the exposure just a touch. Looking at the flow rate here, I'm working with a brush quite low in flow which makes it very measurable and generally easier to use. The feather is up just over 50. So I think if I move on to this area here and just wipe along that area, we can just darken that down a little bit, maybe just a little bit of the water there so it's not too bright and any other small area where you feel the water has come up just a little bit on the bright side. But now, strangely enough, I want to do the exact opposite. So what I'm going to do is to select the little plus here and down here I'm going to paint and that'll leave a pin. Once again, right click, reset because what I'd like to do here is the opposite. I'd like to lift the lighter tones. So maybe I can bring the highlights up, maybe even the exposure up a little bit. What I'm looking to do here is to bring a little bit more light through into this area here. You can see what I'm doing as that water spills through. Maybe a little bit on the right hand side too. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to guide where the viewer is going to view my image. I'm going to draw them in that area where we looked at with those arrows earlier on. So this is going to be a little bit personal where you lift the tones down here but you get an idea of what I've decided to do. I think that's about right. I could try to squeeze a little more in here let me put my cursor in the exposure. If I hit the up arrow, you can see I can overdo it. Previously it was set to about 55, so let me go to 55 and 
just up a couple of notches to 65 that looks okay to me I think I'm more or less ready to open this up into Photoshop one last thing I'd like to do is to put a vignette around the outer edge now to do that we're going to select the filter from the right hand side so over on the toolbox we need this option I'm going to just double click and it'll appear right click once again and reset any settings that were previously there we do get the opportunity to make this smaller rotate it egg shaped we can even take it outside the frame sometimes and if that's necessary just reduce the size of your image and you can do that something like that but you can go further than that once again hit the V key the feather for the edge is way up to 75 it seems to be pretty standard and working nicely for me so I don't find myself changing that very often a little bit of exposure now downwards just around the outer edges not too much I don't want to overdo this just a little bit but now I'm going to go down and open this up as a smart object as soon as the image opens up into Photoshop we can see that it's a smart object we can see a little symbol at the bottom right corner of the thumbnail first thing I generally do at this stage is to save this file as a Photoshop file because I know that if I do create any layers layer masks they'll all be retained along with the smart object status and once I save this as a Photoshop file of course I can still go back into bridge and open up my original raw file which again will retain all the changes that we placed within this image but of course at some stage we may decide we have no need to go back into camera raw and we don't need the smart object status so I'm going to go to the right of the thumbnail right click and rasterize the layer which removes that and takes it back to a standard layer because I just want to do a little bit of strategic color and that's about it can't do that while it's a smart object hence the need to save it first and then rasterize so from the toolbox on the left hand side I need to select my sponge tool from the options at the top of the screen I need to select saturate and I've got a flow set of around about 10% because what I'd like to do here is just enhance the color just in strategic areas and you can see I'm following the route that I feel the viewer is going to look at this particular image not very much and quite delicate changes but I think I'll do a little bit down on the right hand side too but that's about all I think I need to do maybe a little bit of color you can see what I'm doing there we have the image which I think I'd be happy to say is complete so here we see the unedited original file it has a lot going for it but we do need to look past the flatness of a raw file shot in the evening to realize what we can do with this image now I've chosen quite a strong color image here but I'm going to suggest that you could actually work this through as a strong monochrome image too the choice is an individual one but we've made significant difference and I think we're able to do that fairly easily here because the raw materials we started with and here I'm not referring to a raw file but the actual image itself the composition and the content gives us a good platform to start from now sometimes Photoshop manipulations are seen in a negative light and I think that's mainly due to the fact that there are times when if we have an image which is not so good to start the process but we have pretty good Photoshop skills ourselves that we can then pull up from the image a lot more than most can that tends to be viewed as a negative thing 
What I often say in those circumstances is, if Photoshop has the power to do that, just think what it can do when we get the exposure, the content, and the composition right. I'll see you next time.